Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Well, um, I guess uh, we're uh, we're ready to go. Uh, welcome to the Real World Katia V5 machining uh, seminar or webinar. Um, so this is me. Uh, my name's Andy Mills. I'm the uh, manufacturing domain leader at Intrinsis. Uh, just. Uh, <laughs> One or two quick facts about me that you may not be aware of. Uh, so I was uh, quite uh, involved in uh, developing the machining techniques for the uh, use for the Princess uh, uh, Princess of Wales, uh, the Diana Memorial Fountain, which is uh, currently located in Hyde Park. Um, and it's likely to be there for a good uh, number of centuries, I would guess. Um, interesting little project, um, uh, not like cutting metal at all, but uh, there we go. Um, and also, uh, I'm uh, uh, at the weekend, I have fun with uh, radio control model aircraft, as you can see there. So, uh, that's that's what I get up to at the weekend. Uh, so a little bit about Intrinsis, um. So established in 98 as an engineering consultancy uh, using Dassault system products. Um, so now a, a PLM consultancy uh, operating alongside its engineering business as well. So the engineering business is still there and still uh, extremely active along with the, the, uh, the, the value added reselling. Um, so UK's largest uh, uh, and best resourced independent uh, Dassault Systems business partner. Uh, got 64 uh, people, uh, 12 million turnover in, in the PLM side. Uh, the engineering consultancy, more people and a bigger turnover. Um, four offices in the UK and an office in uh, Johannesburg. Um, so PLM Solutions, um, Quite a quite a range of uh, software, uh, mainly uh, Dassault system software. Um, Katia, of course, that everybody's heard of, but Inovia, Delmia, Simulia, the full uh, the full portfolio. Really, um, we use uh, IMS Post for our post processing solutions, uh, but other such things as uh, uh, Ramsys, for example, Human Ergonomics. Uh, even down to 2D CAD, uh, expert CAD, uh, it's uh, an American uh, piece of software, uh, still sell licenses for that, believe it or not. Um, we also do consultancy, of course, software development, uh, project management, uh, support services, uh, training, uh, a very extensive uh, training regime, um, a help desk, um, design consultancy, through uh, in engineering services, of course, contact through to uh, full detailed design, uh, material selection, process recommendations, uh, full prototyping and blueprinting, um, structural analysis, linear thermal uh, expertise in-house with uh, press tool design, as we can see, styling, jigs and fixtures, vehicle installations, um, Etc. Etc. Um, so that's where uh, Intrinsis are as uh, as a as a company. Um, just let me uh, widen out the uh, panel here and see who we've got. Um, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, run this. Um, uh, video here uh, it takes about three quarters of an hour um, and um, we'll take questions at the end of it please uh, by all means you can uh, you know make a note of them I'll, I'll, I'll see them in the list here but uh, um, we are live so uh, I'll, I'll sort of take live questions uh, at the end of the video um, okay um, so let me uh, fire that up, uh, make that full screen. Good afternoon, uh, welcome to the Real World Katia B5 Machining uh, Seminar. Um, okay, so, probably the easiest way to get into uh, 
machining with Katia is to open the assembly that you want to machine, including the part and any fixtures. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, here we go. We have a, a preset uh, assembly that we can work on. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, a fixture and uh, the part is uh, quite clearly a bottle mould. That's what we're going to manufacture during this video. Uh, now, the uh, next step uh, would be to go into one of the machining workbenches. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, five, uh, five or six workbenches here available. Lathe machining, prismatic, surface machining, advanced machining. Uh, there's a review workbench, uh, manufacturer review workbench, and a uh, a specialised uh, workbench for uh, uh, STL files. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to go with surface machining for a start. And uh, there we go. The tree uh, has now uh, changed into what's called the PPR hub. Um, as you can see, it says PPR at the top here. Um, so the three uh, areas are, uh, the top area is uh, P for process, that's where uh, the CNC processes are going to go. The second P is for product. Uh, that's where the, uh, the part and uh, associated jigs and fixtures are going to go. And the R at the bottom is, for the, is, is the resource area, the resource list. That's where any, uh, for example, machine tools, uh, cutters, uh, cutter adapters, etc. That's where uh, they're all going to be stored. Uh, so, the first thing uh, we need to do is set up the part operation. As you can see, it's created uh, a part operation for us, along with the manufacturing program as well. This is uh, just a storage folder for uh, where the programs are going to go. Uh, so, the part operation, uh, we just double-click to edit, and uh, the first thing uh, we can set up is the type of machine that we're going to use. Uh, we click on this icon. Uh, now, Katia uh, uh, includes uh, all of the default machines you might need to use. Uh, so, for example, is a three-axis machine, uh, three-axis with rotary table, five-axis machine, horizontal lathe, vertical lathe, merging lathe, for example. Uh, and you can use those to create any of those type of programs without the need for... Uh, modeling or access to a very specific machine tool. Uh, however, you can uh, also, uh, using this icon, bring in a very specific machine tool, uh, which we're going to do here. Um, and uh, this, is, this is a machine that's been modeled using uh, a different workbench, using the machine tool builder workbench. This machine has kinematics on it. Uh, which allow it to, uh, which allow us to check against machine rotations, collisions, etc., etc. Uh, so it's a fully featured uh, machine. Uh, next thing we'd need to do, uh, we, here we can set up uh, the post processor for this uh, suitable machine here. Um, we can pick uh, a PP table, a post processor table to go with it. Um, decide what sort of output we'd like, uh, APT, or in this case, ISO, G-code. Um, the data format, we're going to be doing five-axis machining at some point during this, so uh, we'll set that to X, Y, Z, I, J, K. Um, pretty much all of the other uh, things uh, are set up automatically for us. Uh, by default, we don't need to uh, do anything else. Um, there are several tabs on here, but because we've uh, picked a machine rather than uh, 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 manually use uh, one of the generic ones, then all of the other tables have been set for us. Uh, so we can uh, we can OK that. Um, OK, next thing uh, probably would be to auto mount uh, as we can see the parts not sat on the table so uh, the next thing is to auto mount the part uh, there's an icon down here uh, workpiece automatic mount there are a variety of ways we could do this but uh, 
in this particular case uh, we'll use the auto mounter uh, and that will move the part onto the table for us um, and then back to the part operation we'll send the machining data and that's uh, this icon here uh, so we click on here uh, now we have got the suitable machining datum uh, created on this part, so it's in uh, it's hidden away. Actually, it's in no show, so uh, we can select that here, go to here, and uh, we should be able to find it. Oh, here it is up here. Um, there, there we go. There's uh, the part. Well, uh, uh, the machining datum, should I say? Uh, we'll give it a different name, we'll call it REF, and uh, that's okay, uh, come back out of no-show. So, uh, the next thing is, uh, let's have a look, oh yes, the um, um, we need to set the uh, tool chains position here, uh, rather than it just being 100 mil up, which is not high enough for this part, uh, we set this from... Uh, uh, from the tool change point that's uh, included in that machine uh, as you can see here these values um, and whilst we're at it uh, we'll activate the collision checking that's an optional uh, function that you get uh, whilst it's during the toolpath computation uh, if you turn it on if it uh, detects any collisions during the uh, toolpath computation it'll warn us uh, so back to the geometry, uh, we need to tell it uh, for simulation purposes, uh, which is the design part. So that would be that part. Uh, and the stock, uh, the stock is in no show, so we can pick that uh, directly from there. The uh, fixture, uh, fixtures, so uh, we'll pick the fixtures out of the tree. Here are the bodies for the fixtures, one, two, three, four, uh, plus the table, we'll have the table on display as well, uh, which you'll see later on. Uh, I think that's uh, possibly everything, oh no, the safety plane, we should set the safety plane, um, we'll set that to the top of the job, and then we'll elevate it uh, with an offset here. 25 millimeters uh, so that's brought the safety plane up 25 millimeters above the highest uh, surface on the job that should be okay there um, then what we'll do we'll um, we'll just to tidy things up we'll hide uh, that datum and the attachments um, So, next thing to do uh, would be to start machining the part. Now, uh, we, we could just manually uh, start and machine the part like this. For example, uh, we could, uh, let's say, do some facing. So, let's go to a prismatic machining workbench, for example, and do a, a facing operation. Uh, so uh, let me just quickly explain how these works. All, all, all of these panels have five tabs along the top and there's a traffic light system uh, in operation. Uh, any of uh, the tabs that have a green light uh, are, are good, good to go. Any tabs that have a red light means that need some attention on that uh, tab. Any tabs that have an orange or an amber light uh, have have something that's been set automatically so they're probably okay to go however you might like to check what's been set on that tab uh, now the, the five tabs are always in the same order and always do the same things uh, so for example the first tab is always about the strategy uh, so this is where um, you, you, you set up various uh, strategy items concerning this type of cut so this is a facing cut uh, are we going to go inwards helical, backwards and forwards, etc, etc. So, uh, step across, step down, you want an extra finishing cut. Uh, the second tab is always about the geometry. So, here we have to tell it anything that's ran, uh, red is mandatory. Anything that's in this pinky colour is optional. 
so I can optionally uh, tell it where some clamps are, but I definitely have to tell it the surface that we're, that we're facing, plus the periphery as well. Uh, the third tab is always about the cutter, and uh, optionally there's a second tab here for the adapter. So I definitely have to give it a cutter, but optionally an adapter. And uh, the types of cutters supported by this operation are listed up here. So we could set that, for example, to a, a facing cutter here. Uh, the fourth tab is always about um, the feeds and speeds. So uh, if the cutters come from uh, a tooling catalogue, then we can use automated feeds and speeds from the catalogue. Or if we uh, take these ticks out of these boxes, then we can uh, type uh, various feeds and speeds. As you can see, there are separate ones for approach, machining, retract, finishing, etc. And the same down here at the bottom for the spindle speed. Uh, could come from a catalog, or we could just type uh, numbers either in surface speed or RPM. Uh, depends what we pick here. And uh, finally, the fifth tab mm, is what's called the macro tab. Uh, these are the uh, little motions that are added at the beginning and the end of the toolpath, uh, especially, but also uh, at various other points in the toolpath, depending on the toolpath, uh, which link everything together. Um, these can range from automated uh, little macros to uh, macros that are built uh, using these icons, very special ones by the user themselves. Uh, so in this case, if I wanted to do this, I, I would just pick here, uh, pick here, and play it, and, and see what we get. So that uh, that that would be uh, that would be okay. You can see it's took. If I slow it down, uh, it's took uh, a sort of three uh, three paths there. I could um, force it to use a bounding envelope, so that's going to square it off, as it were. That will make the cuts go complete width, uh, like so. And uh, indeed, I could do it in shaded mode, um, like so. Um, and we could carry on in that fashion, uh, using these icons, building these toolpaths up manually. Uh, however, um, there's another way to go about this. So I'm just going to click Cancel and uh, remove that tool change out of the tree. Um, if uh, we're dealing with families of parts, uh, such as we probably are here, we could take the trouble to, to put a process, build a process and put it into a catalogue, uh, and then instantiate it from the catalogue for this type of, uh, this type of part. Um, so, <clears throat> there we go. Um, so we can see we have uh, a bottle mold process available here, uh, which is to be inserted at this level. We click OK. And uh, all of these processes have been entered. So this is a, um, a list of processes that would commonly be done with this type of part. Uh, as you can see, uh, a couple of facing cuts, circular milling for the front and back, roughing the cavity, uh, rest milling the cavity, finishing the cavity, etc. Uh, this has brought in a list of tools for us as well, because these, uh, uh, these processes up here have uh, cutters allocated to, to them all, automatically. Um, so um, that would just be, if we play this one, uh, what we'll find is that everything can be set here the only thing we need to tell it about uh, is which uh, which is the geometry to machine. Uh, but just before we do that, uh, this machine, uh, the rotary table on this machine, the C-axis, uh, only has a, a one single rotation. It can't keep going round and round. Uh, so we have to rotate this uh, um, bed by 90 degrees. So here is uh, is a manual rotation. I can type this into the C-axis, uh, like so, click OK. Um, uh, so at this point in the process, it's going to do, uh, it's, it's got a machine instruction, which is rotate the table 90 degrees. Uh, so uh, on with the first facing cut. Uh, let me just 
select uh, select this and we should find uh, everything set there we go uh, it's picked the correct cutter the correct adapter to go with it uh, if we look uh, here we can play that that's fine looks okay uh, these are the little macros you see the red vertical move here and the little red move at the end there the macros uh, we'll play this in shaded mode see what it does there we go so that's a that's a cut across the top that's fine um, we'll okay that move on to the second one pick this one play that one that's fine okay um, notice that one's got a slightly bigger exit value uh, again we can uh, play it now at this point it will play uh, both of them we can store this position save as having to play it from the beginning all the time uh, that's this icon this second icon here uh, it says associate the video result video result file stored click OK click OK and you see we have uh, a blue tick has appeared in the tree so we know we have a a video result file stored at that point in the tree. Um, let's go for uh, circular uh, circular milling. Uh, that's on this end here, the front end. Um, quite simple to do. So uh, we'll just pick the relevant diameter here. Double click to exit. Pick the top surface. Double click. Pick the bottom surface click and again all the rest of the tabs have all been set automatically because uh, it's, it's a common type of part there we go it's just a helical circular milling for that uh, for that piece and again we can uh, we can play that in shaded mode speed it up a little bit okay there we go store that Okay, that, okay, that. Move on to the second one, which is the other end. Pick the relevant diameter, which gives it its axis. Pick the starting surface. Pick the ending surface. Generate the toolpath. There we go in shader mode I've got, two, I've got two uh, well I've got several choices but uh, here if I was to use this icon it'll play from the beginning if I use this icon it'll play from wherever the last blue tick in the tree is so you can see here the end that ends already done and uh, here we can play this end you can see it's uh, slowly working its way in again Speed that up. Faster. There we go. Um, so this retract motion here, that's done by the little macros. So, store that video results. Okay, that one. Now, ultimately, we're going to do a full machine simulation, but just to quickly show you where we're going, uh, we could uh, right hand click on here and say simulate the process using the full machine tool so as you can see it comes on like this we'll slow it down just for a start so this is the sort of motion I might just rewind that and show you again there we go and then uh, that's running too slow, so we'll uh, just speed that up a little bit. And there we go. Uh, machine this end. Machine this end. Etc. Etc. So you, you, you can speed it up. Like so. Um, we're... Uh, we're not really ready to do that yet. So, uh, next job would be uh, the main cavity roughing. So, for that, uh, we need to tell it which part machine to rough is this. Um, and 
to stop it going into areas where we don't want it to uh, visit, uh, we're going to use a limiting line. Um, now, a limiting line has been uh, created and is sat in the tree as the easiest place to pick it. It's in no show. Uh, it's in this geometric set here, limit line. Um, so that should be okay. Um, and we should just be able to play that. Uh, it computes it, of course, first. Uh, well, you saw it was checking for collisions there as well. And uh, there we go. There's the uh, there's the toolpath in uh, simulated in wireframe mode. Um, let's round around, around, around. We've got uh, all sorts of different options, of course, that we've uh, applied here. Um, we're doing helical style machining um, by area. Uh, 60% step over, 2 millimeter depth of court. Uh, we have the small pass filter engage, which will stop it bottoming out in the, if it gets down into a, a tight area. Uh, many uh, different things, feeds and speeds, the cutter, of course, the macros. These are all uh, these have all been set. Um, we'll just run this through in shaded mode. There we go. So this is the, you see it's approached from the outside and uh, like so, so it's going to go around and around, around as you'd expect. And that's where the uh, primary uh, the primary roofing will leave it so we'll store that video result like so uh, okay that okay that that's given us another blue tick in the tree so uh, the next step is to do some rework roofing uh, whilst that initial roofing up here has uh, roughed the majority of it out uh, there will still be areas uh, that that size tool couldn't get into very effectively so we have uh, we have a rework roughing in the tree here as you can see he's using a 12 millimeter end mill here as opposed to a 24 millimeter end mill up there so we'll just set that up and uh, we'll just pick exactly the same as we did the last time uh, so we need a limiting contour which is down here um, and we don't need to do anything else. Uh, the reason being is the roofing on Katia is fully vo volumetric. So the remaining stock from this process uh, will be used as the input for this process here. Uh, consequently, whilst it's an identical uh, process in the tree, if you look, the icons are identical. Um, I haven't uh, done anything about creating a rework area. Uh, it sh will automatically uh, recognize the fact that the majority of the material has disappeared out of the middle. And um, we'll see this is the, uh, this is the tool path produced um, because this is the only area that uh, there is remaining material that uh, this 12 millimeters can get into that the 24 uh, millimeter one didn't. Um, so if we, uh, if we go and play this, uh, then we'll see that it just machines the smaller areas in the bottom where the uh, larger cutter couldn't get into. So I'm just a little strip down the main, down the main bottom area and just in the neck, store that video result. Okay, that, uh, and then move on to the next process. So uh, now we can start and finish, uh, now we've roughed it all out, we can start and finish the bottle cavity. Okay, so we uh, again have to give it, uh, we'll give it the whole part to machine, but limit it uh, using the limit line 
So I was in uh, Honor Machines, the area that we're interested in. Play that. Okay, uh, now we have collision checking turned on. Uh, so it's told us that uh, it's found some collisions. Uh, and we can see here where all these uh, red uh, red marks are. Um, that well, there's a couple of things we need to change. Uh, but we can see uh, see here. Look um, that at this position, um, the uh, the adapter of the tool is uh, colliding with the job by uh, 0.18 of a, of a millimeter. We can put the put the cursor in various areas to see what's happening. Okay. Uh, also, um, we'll see that this tool pass rolling up over the edge. Okay, which is not a good idea. So, uh, what we need to do um, there is to change the uh, uh, the part auto limit. Uh, we'll set the stop mode to the contact point, and we'll just regenerate that tool path. And we can see here that that's enough to uh, position the tool um, just to the contact point where it would uh, start to roll around. Uh, but we still have the problem with the collisions, of course, which we have to deal with. So what we're going to do is convert to that. So this is a standard three-axis toolpath. We're going to convert this into a five-axis toolpath here. So we're going to turn this on. And uh, as a global modification, um, we've got several things that we can do to control the tool axis. Uh, in this case, we're going to make it go through a guide. Uh, and then we have this uh, line here is in red, which means it's mandatory. Um, so we have to pick this and go and find a guide. Now there's a, there's a line, that line there is a suitable line that we can use um, to control that tool axis. We'll play that again and there we go. Um, so if we play this you'll see that uh, the, the guide runs straight down the center of the uh, bottle, uh, slightly high of this face, uh, which causes this tool to uh, rock backwards and forwards in this fashion. Um, obviously we can, uh, I can speed this up and it does this type of a motion. Okay, so we'll, uh, we can run that in shaded mode as well. So there's the type of cut. You'll, you'll notice that each different cutter gets assigned a different color. Um, so we can see on the shaded model uh, which cutters are doing what. Like that, just for the last little chord, you can see the see the motion look. Mm -hmm. And up it goes. Store that results. Now, uh, that will have uh, finished the main cavity. Um, we do have uh, an analyze uh, function here. It's called remain in stock analysis, um, where I can um, have a look and uh, color the picture according to the amount of remaining material. Um, so we can see this uh, uh, green color is uh, basically telling us all the areas that are finished. And we can see where these ribs are on the bottle. That there's uh, a significant amount of stock, uh, more, more than 50 microns, sat in these uh, six corners, uh, either side of these ribs here. So that would uh, that would need attending to. Um, and so that's the next uh, that's the next task is to um, uh, in this particular case uh, one of the easiest ways to achieve that is to create a rework area. Um, so that would be uh, this icon up here. 
and uh, we select the part that we are interested in. Uh, again, we select the limit line, so it only creates the rework area uh, in the places that, uh, that we're looking for. The limit line, by the way, just runs around the top of the cavity, straight across this end, around the other side of the cavity, across the top there, and it just creates a closed profile. Uh, so uh, we have to give it uh, a reference uh, a reference cutter. Uh, so the previous, uh, let me just scroll back up the tree. Um, we can see the previous cutter was a, was an eight millimeter. I uh, can click on here and load it that way, or uh, it'll be in this list here. Um, so we can uh, create this here. Um, then we should just be able to compute that. Um, and here we go. Uh, this appears to have done a nice job. Um, so here's uh, yeah, here's the uh, here's the rework uh, aerial uh, lines. It's discovered. Um, what we need to do is uh, um, let me change those into. Um, yeah, so they're all um, rather than uh, the different colours uh, are telling us which areas it considers to be horizontal or vertical. Uh, if I change this check angle here, um, we'll find that it will uh, list them all as being uh, um, horizontal in this case. Uh, and then we can accept that. So now we can go and utilize this rework area uh, up here. Uh, we've got this semi finishing. And for the geometry, uh, we would pick uh, the rework area from the list. Uh, that should set everything up for us. We've got a smaller tool, etc., uh, etc. Et that should uh, give us this uh, style of toolpath, which is just going to machine uh, concentrating that particular area. Uh, it's going to do this uh, this time machine as you can see. That's just roughing nicely over uh, these three areas and then come back down the other side. Okay, so looks good. Um, again we can just uh, have a quick look in uh, we can have a quick look in shaded mode. We can see here, look. There we go. That's uh, starting from the outside of the uh, area and working. Uh, starting from the outside of the area and working inwards, look. Okay. Now, this shaded replay, you don't have to. Uh, have to replay this if you don't want to. Uh, certainly if you want to do the uh, uh, the remaining stock picture, it does require you to run this. Uh, uh, but of course you've also got the fast forward option. Store that video results. Okay, that. Okay, that. Um, and uh, again, um, that will uh, still uh, leave a little bit of stock in there um, because that's... Uh, uh, a three millimeter cutter, uh, and these rads, uh, these rads in here, these are uh, actually 0.5. So uh, the only way we can finish those off is with this uh, very small cutter here. So we need to create another rework, uh, another rework area, uh, rework area number two. Um, pick this, uh, pick this model. Uh, select the limit line out the tree again. Okay, that. Um, tell it which is the uh, previous cutter, uh, which would be a three millimeter one, which would be that one. Um, anything else that we need to set? Um, yeah, let's, let's just uh, tighten up on the the uh, torrents. Uh, let's try that. Compute that. See what we 
get okay yeah they look nice uh, again uh, need to convert them all into uh, um, one direction so put this one all in uh, again the same um, so I'm going to accept that uh, go into the final rework select the rework area um, and away we go okay so uh, same thing of course uh, very small uh, very small cutter um, suffering the same uh, problem as you can see in uh, various uh, places where it collides uh, so again uh, back into the strategy three to five axis converter uh, as a global modification uh, activate that change it to uh, through a guide select this go and find the guide in here which would be that one uh, go out to there okay that just rejig that and that short um, recreate uh, well it'll be in in actual fact it modifies the toolpath uh, um, to put the uh, rocking motion on it checking for collisions now look okay uh, some positions have been um, removed that's fine and there we go Okay, that's looking good. So, so that's the one mil. Uh, that's the one mil cutter. Okay, looks good. Um, as, uh, again, as I say, we don't particularly need to, but uh, we can uh, just run this uh, in shaded mode, like so. pieces of stock. Okay, store that. Okay, video result file stored. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, well, there's some drilling and uh, bits to do, but uh, um, as we stand, that's uh, that's pretty much machine that part. One of the final tasks is to do uh, a full machine simulation. Uh, that's an optional uh, uh, task, really. Uh, it's an optional workbench as well. Um, uh, three axis, okay, not not so necessary. But uh, for five axis, where you've got uh, head and uh, machine rotations, uh, it really is a good uh, a good idea. So uh, we'll move into um, the uh, machine tool simulation workbench. Okay. And uh, we will, uh, there's an icon up here uh, to create some default clashes. That'll uh, um, uh, uh, set it up very easily for all the clashes that we might, uh, we might expect, uh, as we can see here. And uh, we can decide uh, what sort of interrupt level we want. Uh, so highlight uh, a verbose uh, or an interrupt. Uh, we'll set them both to interrupt because if we have a collision, we want to stop anyway. Um, that should be okay. Uh, we can pick this and uh, that manufacturing program and then start the machine simulation. Here we go. Uh, we can see we have the stock. The stock is optional. You don't need to have the stock there if you don't want to. Uh, and we can run it in uh, various speeds, but uh, it's real-time mode as well. Um, like this okay and then uh, once it's going we'll just uh, speed it up a little bit okay it's looking good okay 
Um, so it's found a collision and stopped. Uh, as you can see here, uh, collision detected uh, for this particular part. Um, we can double click on here, select this. This is the uh, this is the thing it's found here. Look, um, well, you can see the cutters collided with the fixture by uh, a good few millimeters uh, here. Yeah, it says it's relevant. Um, also, um, we can see it in here. There's another icon, uh, which is a fault list. Um, so here, look, we've got one collision. Um, and again, uh, I can click Analyze. It'll take me back to the same place. Uh, I can just modify the toolpath. Not really the right way to go about it. It's the process that's wrong. Uh, and rather nicely, there's uh, uh, a very high performance thing here where it knows which is the actual process in the tree that's caused this problem. Uh, I just click on this button and uh, here we go. It's taking me straight uh, back into this uh, process. Uh, so I would suggest that uh, it's not lifted up high enough. So let's add in uh, an extra, let's say 100 mil lift. Um, and we'll make sure that that's at rapid. Okay, so that's at rapid. Uh, I'll just play that. There we go. Yeah, so there's the extra bit. So that should clear that as it uh, the head comes around 90 degrees. Uh, we can okay that, okay that. Um, so uh, just in case there's anything else, we will uh, compute all the tool paths that may be... Uh, may be necessary um, and then uh, we'll go again and here we go we'll just ease it into it off it goes yeah, so there's your first first facing cut one side second facing cut this is where the collision was before Okay, now we see it's uh, had the extra lift. It's doing fine. Uh, I think we can speed this up quite significantly. And slow it down in various places. We can make it stop at all changes. There are all sorts. It's quite, you know, we can spin it around. It's quite reactive, even though there's a lot of work going on here, obviously. Uh, but if, uh, so it'll do uh, stock collision checks, um, tool to fixture collisions, uh, machine to fixture collisions, etc. Standard views. That's the stock you can see flashing there. Now, of course, you wouldn't, uh, in reality, you wouldn't need to uh, sit and watch this thing. Uh, there's a batch mode. You can uh, you can run this uh, process in batch mode. Um, and it'll just come back and tell you what the results are. Um, or uh, you can just leave it running in the background and uh, get on with something else. Tool. 
Is. Uh, now we've run this, we could just quickly pop in to the uh, remaining stock, which is, uh, is now available. Um, which is here. Uh, and, and check for the uh, amounts of remaining material on this, uh, on this type of job. Um, so the only uh, couple of things left to do um, would be to uh, we need to generate some uh, NC code. Uh, so we'll just go uh, we'll go back into uh, one of the machining workbenches um, and uh, all we need to do for that uh, is quite simple. Um, is a uh, right mouse button on the manufacturing program we're interested in. Uh, we can say generate NC code interactively. Uh, we'll just check that it's all set up correctly, but uh, it should be. Um, here, yeah, this is the uh, post process that we're interested in. Uh, we'll have uh, one program for all of it. Uh, it's going to go into that folder. Uh, that should be it, really, uh, if we execute... Uh, Execute that. That's the post processor running. It's an IMS post processor. Uh, ended successfully. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we can go and have a look in the folder for the toolpath, but uh, uh, there is uh, an option here to display uh, the NC code. So that's the NC code for uh, for all of that lot. Um, you can see there's a lot of three axis stuff there. Here's all the five axis stuff. Okay, uh, so that's fine. Um, and then uh, maybe some uh, um, shop floor documentation. Uh, that's another option that you can do quite easily. Uh, again, select this, uh, click on this icon over here, generate documentation. Uh, there's a script built in to Katia that uh, fetches a lot of information out of the process and creates some HTML pages for you. Um, yes, it's going to go in this folder. Uh, let's call this uh, bottle mold. Okay, that script runs, generates the documentation, offers to open it in a browser for you, and there you go. Here's the uh, uh, HTML documentation, a picture of the machine. Uh, there's a part operation, um, so all sorts of bits and bobs, didn't put any description on it, uh, but there's information about the machine here. Um, go back to here, is uh, a list of tools uh, that we've used, um, information about the actual cutters, for example, uh, the associated operations that that uh, cutter uses um, and information and the manufacturing uh, information okay so you can see it will change uh, this machine instruction um, here is the first facing cut 
all of the parameters uh, that were in the cutting time of 19 seconds, 19 seconds total time, etc. All the way through um, all of these logs, circular milling, all the way down. Uh, total time, 49 minutes, 33 seconds cutting, 57 uh, minutes total. I might have to look at that a little bit, but uh, you get uh, you get the idea. Uh, this, of course, with it being a script, can be uh, quite easily customised if you know um, CAT script, uh, sort of like Visual Basic, uh, or indeed Intrinsic can uh, modify it for you. Um, so uh, that's about it, and we'll uh, we'll complete this video at that point, and uh, we'll go back to uh, some questions. Okay. Uh, well, I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed that uh, that video. Um, let me see if there are any, uh, if anybody's typed any questions, just bear with me, um, or indeed I can, uh, unmute, uh, the people. So if, um, if there are any questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to, uh, uh, speak up now. Okay. Um, nobody, uh, nobody got anything. Uh, uh, let me just have a little look. Is there anything else? Okay, uh, well, um, just uh, finish off the last few slides then. So, uh, next steps, if, uh, uh, oh, just to let you know, by the way, you will be uh, emailed a copy of this uh, presentation um, uh, at the uh, marketing executive uh, will uh, email you a link um, about where you can download this from. Um, but uh, by all means, uh, keep checking on our uh, blog for uh, weekly hints and tips. Uh, also, you can find our training uh, calendar uh, on the uh, Intrinsis website, uh, forward slash training. Um, you can uh, arrange for a, a demonstration of manufacturing or indeed any of the other areas of uh, Katia stroke Delmia. Um, on the uh, with the contact form, uh, you can find us on uh, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and uh, I'd like to say thank you and uh, good afternoon, and I uh, hope to uh, see you on the next one. <laughs>